Hi, what's up everyone? This week on Garage Time, I wanna show you how I lifted this Porsche chassis 24 and a half inches off the garage floor using my homemade DIY tire stands. It's kind of a poor man's lift to get the car up off the ground. Let's get ready for some body work. Let me show you how I did it. Garage time. The nice thing about this tubing is it's designed to telescope. So the um, wall thicknesses and the diameters are just about correct. So this is a uh, two inch, this is inch and three quarters. I think it's 12 gauge thickness. So these slide in and out relatively easy and the holes are you know, already there so that they line up every one inch increment. That saves a lot of time drilling holes. This material is more expensive than the bare steel because A, it's galvanized, and um, B, it has all the holes punched in it. And I don't need this many holes, but um, to get the telescoping features, this was the only thing I could buy. Okay, this is ready to tack weld into the base plate, but before I can do that, I need to strip the uh, galvanized coating off of this material. This came um, pre-galvanized and pre-drilled, but uh, it's dangerous to weld galvanized metal, so I'm gonna dip it in the uh, hydrochloric, <laughs> I'm gonna dip it in hydrochloric acid, swimming pool acid, and uh, diluted 50 water, 50% 50 acid, and that strips the uh, plating off so I can weld it to this base plate. welds.
Okay, this thing is done. Um, it's sticking a little bit, which I think I got one of the tubes twisted. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and push it all the way down and see how stuck it gets. But the idea is to use a jack to lift it up anyway. So I'm just gonna go for it and see if I can get it to... So it's going... Just gets, the last few holes, it gets really tight. Okay, here's how it's supposed to work. You're supposed to be able to put this in here like this. Yeah, so that's it right there. Single wheel car lift. Okay, let's try it out on the car. Well, this is the concept anyways, to get um, you know, one tire at a time on the lowest settings. So I only have one made at the moment, but if I had more, I would be going around the car, putting all of the tires on the lowest setting. But I'm just gonna play with this and the jack to try to go a little higher, um, even though the car is not supported on the other three wheels, just to see how it moves. So far, it seems to be working Okay, on the inside, this tire has a, way too much camber, but um, the tire on the inside is touching the bar. So it should kind of prevent it from rolling, even though, you know, this car doesn't have an emergency brake. See, it does roll a little bit on the, on the base. So I could um, put another piece of metal in here to kind of shim that up, keep it from rolling as much. Okay, I don't have the right material to go in the holes, um, but I do have this. I'm gonna just give it a try and see how it does. Okay, so there it is supported um, with only the, the tire stands. And I'm just looking to see, you know, what kind of, movement there is. Um, this is probably overbuilt just like I do everything, but um, I'm considering adding some shear plates along the sides. So I want to get a feel for how much it, it takes a kind of parallelogram. Um, but right now it's looking okay. But I'm going to do this on my uh, daily driver. It's a lot heavier than this car. This car has no engine, no transaxle, so it's not really fair. So I'm going to take this to my Mazda and uh, do the same thing, okay? Okay, I'm just heading outside. So interesting factoid about me, if you're uh, curious, I'm uh, into vintage jet skis in addition to Porsches. And that's my trailer with all the bikes in it, sailboat. Seems to be doing okay. I had to use the full stroke of the jack just to get it underneath there. And this is worst case. I mean, this is an angled driveway. Uh, it's got a big crack in it. Um, the emergency brake is on, but it seems like it's pretty stable. I'm gonna try to lift it up some more. Now I didn't go all the way up because um, it's really not fair to do only one tire at a time, but uh, I probably could, um, but normally there would be, you know, four on each tire first round and then do the second round of jacking each individual wheel after that. But this is already up. Um, 
uh, three holes. So I'm gonna give it another shake and then call it good. Yeah, I don't see anything moving at all. So I was worried about it just collapsing that way. And I may still add some strength to the back, but even on this angled driveway, it seems to be doing okay. Cool. There we go. Who wants to measure the torsional strength of my Mazda? You can see a little tire mark on the, the metal there, but I didn't see any bending um, here or here. A lot of weight is supported by these bars. Um, definitely some in the middle too, but I didn't see any bending anywhere. It still works up and down. And then there were four. I'm excited to get them down on the car. Let's do it. Okay, the car is up at its maximum height. This is 24 and a half inches off the ground. So I think this is pretty equivalent to the scissor lifts or the, uh, the quick jacks. This puts the car up pretty high. Now, the reason why I'm doing this now is because it's time to start block sanding and preparing the, uh, the body for paint. So that means when I'm sanding, it makes it much, much easier. Now I did add a uh, piece of metal in here to try to prevent the car from rolling back and forth. And it helped a little bit. I've only chalked the, uh, the rear tires. So I'll probably make a more permanent um, tire chalk here just to keep the car from rolling as much as it does. Okay, the height of this tube from the floor, this is um, an inch and three quarters. So it's, it's, uh, it's highly unlikely that the car is gonna just roll over this tubing. But that is one of the concerns. You definitely don't want to be, uh, you know, pushing too hard. If you're working on the car, you don't want to push it off of these uh, big towers here. I can now reach the bottom of these panels and do it comfortably. So even when I was stripping the car, I didn't get low enough. So there's still undercoating. Everything on this rocker it actually goes underneath. So I still have some, some paint work to do on the bottom here. But this is going to make block sanding um, just so much easier when the car's up this high. I also have some work to do underneath the car and <clears throat> I'm not gonna go underneath this car quite yet. Um, just like with any jacking system, especially a new one, um, there needs to be some redundancy involved. So I would, would build, um, to go underneath this car, I would put some um, chocks on the front and the rear, you know, a stack of tires or, or something to, if the car does fall, to catch it before it falls on me. Now. The car does seem pretty stable. There is some, the struts and a lot of suspension is loose on here. So another reason not to go underneath it. Um, and I am starting to see when it in, is in the fully um, high position, I am starting to see these um, uprights move, move just a little bit. It's actually flexing the base plate. So 
Before I do a lot more on this, I am going to strengthen the base plate on the sides and on the back, just to give it some more rigidity, because um, I'm starting to see some movement here. I'm seeing some movement in the wheel too, but I'm starting to see some movement on those uprights, and that's a concern. So that needs to be improved before I really spend any time underneath this car. Okay, one of the big limitations to this type of lift, if you want to call it a lift, is that the tires cannot be removed. You know, this has great access underneath. Things like I can work on the undercoating, for instance. I can do the steering, the brake lines, the fuel lines, the electrical, the you know, transaxle, a bunch of different stuff doing the engine swap. Um, that's gonna help do all those things. But to do any work on the uh, brakes or hubs or anything like that, uh, obviously the wheels have to be on the car for this to work. Don't forget, if you're enjoying these videos and or if you think I'm crazy, um, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And don't forget, um, please purchase a shirt uh, if you want to support the channel. If not, no big deal. Take care. Have a good week.